Hello. I have already spoken in English in public and in front of all kinds of audiences. But it was practical always about the Turkish cinema, its problem, its creators, etc. And also practical always in foreign countries. So for the first time, I will do that at home and in a university. That gives me a kind of thrill, most naturally. I will talk to you about myself, my career, about what I have achieved and what I could not, which means about my eventual success and my certain failures. Uh, I know that the second would be more interesting, much more interesting, actually, because people hardly speak about their failures. Don't expect too much through confessions, but as a whole, I will try to be as honest and as interesting for you as I can. Up to now, practically the most charming and compliment-like thing which is said and written about me is that I am someone who turned his hobby into a career. And that is very true. Movies have been, since a very early age, my favorite entertainment and gradually my passion. Therefore, I am a good and rare example of this kind of, of a career. I am one of the founders in Turkey, almost the founder of the film criticism as a profession. And I think that for the young people, you are in the eve of many crucial choices in your personal, social, professional lives, that would be the most interesting and useful story to hear from me. So I was born in Izmir. That goes back to 1939, the year the world would witness the greatest of all wars. We lived in Kashyaka, in an old Greek house with a large garden, given to Turks after the famous Mubadele, exchange of peoples uh, at the early 20s. We had a modest life, my father being a civil servant and inspector at the Devlet Demiryolları, the state railroads. I was the only child then. The two sisters I have would come some years later. It was war years, a general deprivation, if not poverty, very modest lives. The rare entertainment we had were the child games in this then very calm and peaceful area music coming from the state radio, and a few cinemas. Those cinemas, that was something. Sumer was the one at the main corner of, of Shayeste Street. Melek was the open-air one on the coast of Izmir. Uh, but thanks to the Aegean climate, you could go there almost nine months a year. And eventually, if we went onto the other side of the bay, taking one of those charming boats to the Alsanjak area. We could, go to the, we could go to the Teyare Theater, which is actually the only one which survived as a theater. And those first films of my life, I am far from forgetting them. I won't mention them, of course, but let me tell you that in those first years of my childhood, they kind of grabbed my mind and my soul and never let them go since. My parents liked movies. And as there were no one at home to confide me to, whenever they went to the movies, they had to take me along. So I was watching films more or less for my age, pirate movies, swashbucklers, comedies, and musicals, but also films of their choices, love stories, melodramas, films about war. So next to the first Technicolor films of the epoch, which impressed me most, there were beautiful black and white ones, which almost impressed me as much. I remember, let's say, films like The Corsican Brothers, Arabian Nights, Cobra Woman, The Black Swan, not the marvelous film of Aronofsky, of course, that was an old pirate movie with Tyron Power as the leading actor, The Exile, all popular historical films full of action sword duels, etc. But also Mrs. Manoeuvre of William Wyler, which described in mid-war the hard days of a typical British family under German bombs. 
or the models looking, for me at least, Casablanca, which the future world would establish, would establish as an absolute cult film. Maybe it is there that I already learned that it is not the color, action, special effects, very fast editing, bravely the packing, which make a good film, but rather a good story, worth watching, first-class acting, and the sincere, true, and heartfelt sentiments. Then we moved to Istanbul. After having made the first two classes of the primary school in Izmir, my family decided to move to Istanbul in order to send me to Galatasaray, the then and still prestigious high school based on the French education, the favorite culture and language of those days. It was most probably the choice of my father, who spoke French since childhood and who cherished that culture. So I entered the third class of the primary Galatasaray, which was then a loan to within that building of the university nowadays, and which sadly burned down, burned down recently. I knew much later what a sacrifice that has been for them. They had left behind that big house with a garden, all those friends for years, those quiet and warm evenings of Izmir, and had to come to live in a small apartment in Nishantashi, in a big city where they knew practically no one, except my aunt, my mother's elder sister, who was marrying to a charming businessman, uh, much richer than my parents, and who had enormously encouraged that immigration, probably because they had no children, while we were already two siblings with a third one to be born in Istanbul. So we all had the advantages of growing up with, uh, in, with practically two families. But we, and especially me among the children, have never forgotten those Karshiaka days, and we always have a bitter and nostalgic remembrance of them. Istanbul has been quite a change in my life, big, crowded, busy as it was, even back to those days, it was also capturing and full of promises for a young man, especially when, we moved, uh, when I moved to the high school and therefore discovered the big old area. My long-lasting affection and fidelity, which also made me, as some people say, a big old writer, began those days. It certainly deserved its fame of being already in the Ottoman Empire, the window or the door opening to Europe and the Western civilization, maybe more in a practical way than big and pretentious cultural theses or theories, because practically everything that affected and changed the social life of the epoch came through Beod. And this includes cinemas, theaters, restaurants, bars, clubs, public houses, maisons de rendezvous, cafés, café chantant, florists, toy shops, makeup and beauty shops, fashion houses, etc. A big transformation to a new era, which came to the attention of a huge empire through one city, and especially one of its popular quarters. The few cinemas of Izmir were replaced by many uh, bigger and more modern ones, offering a much wider choice. Theater and good food, two of my biggest hobbies to come, also entered my life in Beodo. Other things too, it would be too long to enumerate them here. Cinema was also at work in school itself. They had a cinema club, and as I, as I always remained a boarding student, I took great advantage of the screenings of the classic films there. I remember, for instance, that it was the screening of Casablanca in school that I really discovered this film and felt under a charm forever. It is also there that I started to write on Friday nights, Friday evenings, on the blackboard, the so-called Films of the Week, 
either having seen some of them in Wednesday afternoons we spent outside the school, or having read about them in national cinema magazines of the epoch, such as Yildiz, Artist, or Sess, or in the American magazines, which we could reach also in Beyoğlu, in the American Library, as it was called then, which was situated within the old building, which is today the Greek General Consulate. I put stars at the end of my films as well on the blackboard, and therefore not only shown to my classmates the way to the best movies in town, but also gave another signal of what I was going to do in the future. You see, I am in the 47th year of my professional critic career, but in fact, this goes far beyond that to the childhood. Galatasaray and then the Güzel Sanatlar Akademisi, the Academy of Fine Arts, which is today the Mimar Sinan University, also taught me a lot, shaped my character, and made me what I am today. Actually, some confessions now, I don't have much sense of belonging to a community. I am not nationalistic at all. I have my own way of mystic beliefs. But although the huge respect I have for the religion, actually all the religions, I cannot say that I am part of any religious community. The same way I don't have much feeling of being a Galatasaray fan or a Mimar Sinan graduate with an architect diploma or anything at all. Maybe the fact that the Galatasaray High School was situated in Beyoğlu affected my life more than the school itself. Or maybe it's the other way around. It's hard to know. Sometimes when I go to meetings of my schools, either among friends or officially, or participate to debates such as the future of the Turkish cinema, what will come out of Galatasaray? What will come out of Galatasaray? Or is Istanbul being demolished by the policies of this government and the greed of the constructors? I have a strange feeling of not belonging to any of those good-willing associations, organizations, clubs, professions, and their meetings. I am not an unconditional friend, fan, or supporter of neither Galatasaray nor the Chamber of Architects, Critics Association, Friends of the Turkish Cuisine, the Writers Club, the Tourist Guides Union, because I worked as a tourist guide as well, and for many years actually, the Journalists Union, nor anything. I belong to all of them, but I'm still extremely free and available. Although I studied, worked, wrote about, gave my energy, and learned from all those professions, occupations, associations, unions, or clubs at different periods of my life, I still feel, I still feel very independent and with not much sense of belonging to any of them. I still have a very individualistic look at life and a total sense of freedom. This despite the big respect I have for all of them as persons or institutions. Thus, after Galatasaray, I studied at Mimar Sinan to be an architect. It took seven precious years of my life, including one I spent giving up everything at the end of a personal crisis in Paris. I worked there in an architect's office, earned my money for the stay, and after 14 months, returned home to finish my studies. It is gorgeous to be in Paris when you are in your early 20s. Nothing comparable. So much the city had, and I suppose still has, to offer. Cinema and theater, of course, but also good food, the European intellectualism, the greed the French have for conversations. You take all these and add up love, and romance a la Francaise. What else a young man could ask for an education in matters of life? Then I came back to Istanbul and the school again. Right after the graduation, I went to the military service for two years, all of which spent in Anatolia, six months in Balıkesir, and a year and a half in Salihli, a small Aegean town which was constantly shaken in the years 1964-65 by continuous earthquakes. 
This also taught me a few things. How to act in case of an earthquake, and later on, how to appreciate films of Nuri Bilge Ceylan, Reha Erdem, Semih Kaplanoğlu, or Zeki Demir Kubus, which all took place in small Legion towns. That teaches something. After my service, I started to work as an architect in, in the Istanbul municipality, and almost at the same time as a critic in Cumhuriyet. Both of the jobs, I got them with my personal initiative. Nobody advised me. Nobody encouraged me. Nobody gave me a card to apply for any job. Nobody sent me to a cousin or to an uncle he knows. I always made my choices myself and knew very well what I wanted. It was a time when there were not enough qualified young people, so things were relatively much easier. This, I should also say very openly. The municipality accepted me without any hesitation, for instance. About Jumuriet, that was the paper we were reading at home, and I, knew, and, I, and I knew very well that in the autumn of 1966, their official critic, who was Ural Birand, a relative of the late journalist Mehmet Ali Birand, was missing. He had a scholarship for one year in Brussels. So, so to speak, I jumped on the occasion. I wrote the critics of the three films at the cinemas, put them in a file, and went directly to Jumuriyet and asked to see the editor-in-chief, the late Ejvet Güresin. With his eagle-like looks, he had a glance on the file and sent me to Errol Dalli, also a well-known journalist of the epoch. And they didn't promise me anything. They said, we will see. But just five days later, my first reviews were published. Thus, in the easiest way possible, I had become the cinema critic of the cherished and cult paper of the Turkish intelligentsia of the epoch. My Jumuriyet days is a subject, is a subject of another uh, subject of not only another conference, but a whole memory book, which is waiting to be written, actually, someday. In very brief, thanks to this job, I came to know almost every single artist, writer, or intellectual of my country. I made many friends among them. I stayed in Jumuriyet for 27 years, a long time, and been mostly happy with it. Then came the time to move, to change. Sometimes it becomes necessary, almost inevitable. And one understands very well when one has to quit. That's what I did. I wrote for one year in Milliet, then I moved to the newly published in Yuzil. To take part in a paper from the scratch is an adventure which is marvelous, which is fantastic. Then the Yenizil closed down, and I moved to his brother's publication, Sabah, where I still am since 15 years now. Cinema is my love, said the famous Turkish actress Türkan Şoray in her TV program. I would rather say it's my passion. It has been my passion since I was a child, and it still is. I don't know what else I could do. I would still write, of course. That's my best vocation. And I would write other things, short stories, novels, poems, plays, scripts, etc. It's not for nothing that I recently published a book of poems and another one of short stories. I would have started that much, I would have started that kind of writing, that kind of activity much earlier and would have come a longer way. Maybe it would be better, but maybe not, who knows. On the other hand, I would have missed all those films, all the wonderful feelings they gave, lessons they taught, paradises they took me, they took me to, all the joy, happiness, thrill, emotions, sadness, and satisfaction they gave me. Maybe it's better this way. Anyway, whoever was or is able to change his destiny. Finally, I am happy enough of what I have done, the way I've lived, and all the experiences I've had. A, love, a life lived the boat in its most natural course, and also through the thousands, millions 
of impressions and experiments of all those films. Isn't it a wonderful combination? So I think I have the good life, and that I have to be thankful for it. Thank you.